Welcome into another episode of the Morning Huddle Live from First Financial Bank. Terry Slavens with you along with athletic director and head football coach for the East of Mavericks, uh, Coach Cliff Watkins. Coach Watkins, thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, man, week 11. Yeah, it's gone fast, hasn't it? It has really uh, flown by, and I, I think I mentioned this last week, but it just seems like, you know, Langley mentioned off the air that it feels like the first week of football around here. I mean, it seems like just yesterday you and I were sitting down for the first time me not knowing that what to expect out of you, you not knowing what to expect out of me, and uh, we have found out a whole lot about each other over the year. We found out a whole lot about the season Maverick football team uh, that came away with a forty-five to six win at Nakona last week. Coach fast start, twenty-one points in the first quarter. Maybe a little uh, loss of focus there for a period of time, but then we regained it. Went on to put seventeen points on the board in the second quarter and uh, build a 38 nothing halftime lead, and we turned it over to young guys. But let's talk about the first half. Well, what did you see in the in the first quarter? Uh, I thought we got off the bus well in the first quarter. Yeah, we did, and that's what we talked about all week. Uh, you know, as, as I talk about on the show each week, uh, talk to our kids every week, we don't care who we play on Friday night. we got to get better during the week and focus on ourselves. And that's what we had to do last week. And uh, even though we were playing a Kona and they hadn't won a game, it, it wasn't the point in the season to come out and play sloppy football. And so we, we made the long trip and, and came out and, and started fast and, and got off to a good start. Like you said, hit a little lull there for a series or two and then uh, got back. And But overall, you know, executed well and, and, and made the trip and got another victory. Well, and, you know, very difficult. I know your motto is, I've read it everywhere, I've heard it on TSN Sports today, the next big game is the next big game on the schedule regardless of who it is. You tell that to a bunch of 16, 17, 18 year olds, but in the other year, everywhere they go in town, they're hearing Cisco, Cisco, Cisco right. now for two weeks. And uh, it's just sort of natural for them to maybe lose a little bit of that focus, and especially after the two and a half hour bus ride. Right. Yeah, it's hard. And you you preach to them all week, and, and, and maybe they're listening, maybe they're not. And hopefully they are. And, and like I said, it's, uh, it's a hard game to focus for because of what was. Um, Coming up the next week and who we were playing that week, but uh, but overall handled it handled it pretty well. Uh, you know, on a bright spot, good to have Martinez back in the backfield. He knocked some rust off. Uh, that was very important to get him some reps in real time situations prior to tonight. Right, very very good to have him back. And uh, you know, like we said, we suited him up against Henrietta. You know, didn't want to play him, but if we needed to, uh, could have. And uh, went through full week practice last week and was able to get back out there. And, and get some live action. And uh, on the defensive side of the football, uh, Jaden Jones, a huge night, I think, involved in 17 tackles, uh, uh, a name that we call somewhat, but that's probably his best game of the year, right. Stati yes. statistically, yes. anyway. Yes, and, uh, you know, Jaden's been one of those guys that's been up a few weeks and back down on JV a few weeks, just kind of where we needed him, and he's done a great job of, of focusing and playing where, where he needed to be to help the team that week. And uh, last week he was up, and... and did a great job filling in and, and getting the job done. Uh, last week, uh, I watched the interview with Coach West after their game against Jacksboro. And, uh, when they asked him about the second half when the young guys got to play, that you could just see that twinkle in his eye. You got to get a whole bunch of young guys, a lot of reps at right. the varsity level last week. And overall, I was pretty impressed with the overall performance of that squad. Yes, uh, I believe we brought 13 guys up last week. And, uh, and for the majority of those 13, that was their first ever time to step on the field on Friday night. And uh, for the most part, they, they did a good job. And it was good for them to be able to come in on Saturday morning and see themselves on film and uh, from playing on a varsity football game and, and uh, saw what they what they did right, what they got to fix. And, but it was good experience for those guys to, to get in, in the ball game. Uh, also, you know, one of the things that you preach week in and week out, you want to be the most physical team on the football field. I would gather that if you went to Nakona on Monday morning and walked into their field house and said, How's he, how are y'all guys feeling today? Uh, we were on their third quarterback yeah. midway through the first quarter. Yeah, first quarter they, they had lost two quarterbacks. So, um, once again, I do believe we were the most physical team. And uh, they, they defense is doing such a good job of, of not only being physical when they get to the ball, um, physical on their way to the ball, and then getting a lot of hats to the football. And uh, – and you know we don't 
on injury for anyone. You know, no. we just want to want to be a physical football team, and, and sometimes those are going to happen. And Bruises are okay. We'd rather not break anything. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. And, you know, I had Evan Wren on the air this morning on Good Morning Texas, and he's the beat writer for the big country for the Abilene Reporter News, and uh, a pretty big statement that he made when we would talk about defense. He's been covering the big country since 2006, and he said this is uh, the best defense that he's seen an Eastland Maverick football team have. That's over an eight-year period. That's a pretty big statement, a pretty good testament uh, to you and your staff and Coach Fambro. Yes, uh, Coach Fambro and uh, all the other coaches are doing a fantastic job. And uh, like we talked about we early in the year and we've talked recently, uh, you know, offensively there was change, but defensively it was – complete change and so it's taken those guys a little bit to uh, pick up the new stuff what's going on not only terminology but total scheme and now they're comfortable with it they know what's going on um, they're playing with a lot of energy and they're and like we talk about every week they're being physical and and uh, I, I think that's a big big part of the success we've had on defense and then and then something that's happened the last three or four games is we really started to force turnovers, um, not just somebody dropping the ball on the ground, but our defense forcing the ball and and getting turnovers back to the offense, and they're they're doing a great job of that. Now you look at the season totals, points allowed. I think we're averaging somewhere in the neighborhood of, of averaging 12 points a game. But you take out the Breckenridge game and you take out the Clyde game, and that average goes way down. Right. And uh, since district play, I think we're averaging giving up uh, somewhere in the neighborhoods of seven or eight points per game. And that's probably more indicative of the kind of defense that we have right now compared to uh, the early season. That's why, I mean, I break uh, high school football seasons into three seasons. You have the non-district schedule, the district schedule, and then next week we'll start the, the, the right. serious stuff, and that's win or go home time. But uh, that's why you have the non-district stuff, especially with a new staff coming in to work things out. Yes, and and uh, first of the year we had guys playing some different spots and and got them moved around to where uh, they could help us the most. And and you know we talked about this early in the season. We had our bye week very very early and didn't think we were going to like it, but it allowed us to go out and get a lot more work in and uh, a lot more teaching and learning going on and get some guys in, in the spots that we needed them in and it was very beneficial for us this year to have that bye week early on. All right coach we're going to go ahead and take our first break here on the morning huddle live from First Financial Bank. Before we do so uh, a note from the mayor of Eastland he called me right before I got here and wanted us to get this out on the air. Uh, they want to encourage Cisco fans to come to Eastland via I-20 and you will park on the east side of the stadium wherever that may be. Uh, Walmart wherever you can find a spot. Uh, they uh, Eastland fans, please park on the west side. It could be Brookshire's or First Financial Bank parking lot, wherever. Uh, outside, outside lanes from the bank to the stadium and from Higginbotham to the stadium will be closed uh, starting at 530 for pedestrian traffic. So if you're having to walk a long ways, you're going to have to, you'll have plenty of room to walk. There are going to be golf, golf cart shuttles available before and after the game. Primarily for people with disabilities, they'll try to help you get into the stadium uh, however they can. And please, if you can, carpool. Uh, that will eliminate vehicles. Uh, yeah, I might start a shuttle service or charge people to get in. You know, no, I'm kidding. I won't do that. But uh, anyway, please try to carpool to eliminate vehicles. Gates will not open till 5:30. Uh, Evan Wren said he may head down here about 1:30 and start hitting all the tailgaters that are around. So. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a break, making our first break. We'll be back with more of the Morning Huddle from First Financial Bank right here on KTX Sports. Today, or if you'd like to see a video edition of this, you can log on to eastlandcountytoday.com. That video will be posted somewhere around 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon. Once again, eastlandcountytoday.com. Another little uh, housekeeping note to pass along. Today only, Pizza Hut here in Eastland. Today only, buy any large pizza, get a one-topping medium pizza absolutely free. It's their game day special out at Pizza Hut, and thank you, Pizza Hut, for feeding us up in the press box. Uh, we really appreciate that, Coach. Of course, you know Coach Blackwell, he comes in back from halftime, he snags a <laughs> piece of pizza on his way. Yeah. <laughs> so, Coach, last week, uh, district-wise, Cisco 60, Jacksboro 6, no, no shocker there, and we're going to talk a bunch about Cisco here in a minute. Henrietta Millsap also, no surprise, Henrietta gets a win 55 to nothing. City View punches their ticket to the playoffs with their 44-12 win over Holiday. That's the one game that maybe had a little intrigue, but uh, Holiday unable to keep up with right. the speed of uh, City View Mustangs. That was for 
the playoff spot, but uh, I knew Holiday was going to have a hard time keeping up. Right. So not not a big surprise to me there. Okay. Uh, tonight, Henrietta at City View. That is a, a, a seeding game. Winner of that game finishes in third place. Uh, loser finishes in fourth place. Uh, you know, we've seen both of those teams. City is going to score against whoever they play. Right. Uh, the question is, can their defense stop Henrietta from scoring right. more? It, that's going to be that's an interesting game to me, just because of how good um, Henrietta's defense is. But uh, what City View does will will give them problems. And and as physical as Henrietta is on both sides of the ball, that's something that City View lacks. And so um, City View will probably have a hard time stopping. Henrietta from running right at him, and so it, it could be a back and forth game, and it, I expect it to be a, a good ball game. Uh, Holiday and Millsap at Millsap, Nakona at Jacksboro. Uh, those are just finishing up the season, getting ready for basketball games. Uh, probably uh, Holiday gets a win at Millsap. Jacksboro picks up another district win, hosting Nakona. Right. No. Uh, another game I want to take a look at briefly: Highland Park at Tuya. People, uh, David Bailey said, "Why is Highland Park at Tuya on our pick'em sheet?" Well, if he did his research while he was on, no, I won't say anything about vacation. Uh, <laughs> is this the first time he's been here this month? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Highland Park at Tulia. Uh, the significance of, that's a seeding game as well, three and four, right. uh, which means the winner of tonight's game will face the loser of that game. The loser of tonight's game will face the winner of that game. And we have some stadiums already reserved, uh, one in Vernon, which I would assume would be the Highland Park venue, and uh, the one in Snyder would be the Tulia venue. Right. That Yes, because, because there's four of us. Then we all have to agree on something. Uh, Coach West and I talked last weekend and agreed that uh, me and him would, would agree on something and let those guys figure out where they want. We wanted to play them because us being so close, any venue for Cisco would work with us and vice versa. And so, since the first place team from our district plays the fourth place team and the second place third, that's why the winner of our game plays a loser of that one and vice versa. And, and so, we all agreed. Uh, Emerald Highland Park, whoever plays them will play in Vernon Friday night at 7.30. And whoever ends up playing Tulia will play Friday night at 7.30 in Snyder. So, okay. So keeping the same 7.30 kickoff, keeping everything the same uh, as long as we can. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's talk about last night's games out, uh, well, actually over at Chesley Field. All of them played over there. And I made the assumption, I'm, I'm assuming I'm right, that we moved everything there to protect the turf due to the yeah, two with, and a half inches of rain. With as much rain as we got, uh, the fields were soggy and just wanted to let it dry out as much as we could. And being Cisco and so close, we didn't think it'd be a big issue changing the site. So we moved all three games to Cisco. Next year, all three games will be over here. Okay. So we just did that just just to uh, keep the field together as much as we could. All right. So uh, let's see. Last night, seventh grade team, uh, I happened to be there just for a split second. They take the opening kickoff. They run one play. They fumble uh, in the red zone, and they take it right yeah. on the very next play. They're in the end zone, and, and Cisco's up eight to nothing. Right. And then the next series, we, we – Put a little drive together, and then we score about a 53-yard touchdown, and uh, don't convert our extra point. It's eight to six, and then from there, uh, it kind of got away from us. And Cisco has a, a very good seventh-grade football team, and and uh, we we just turned the ball over too many times, and to against a team like that to be able to keep it close and and have a chance to win. But uh, they that was the seventh grade's first loss. Uh, the, of the season, finished second district, and and had a great year. Was was really proud of those guys. And uh, they are the only team to have scored on Cisco's seventh grade team this year. Yes, they that, that was the first touchdown allowed by Cisco. That's so, right. Uh, okay, eighth grade. Uh, they also fell over at Cisco last night. They did, and uh, the first quarter and even the first half that was a tight ball game. And uh, the eighth grade has had a few injuries the last few weeks and had some guys out and. Uh, and and you know so that anytime you, junior high you lose kids and it, it's gonna it's gonna affect you and and uh, but those guys you know I believe they they had two wins the year before as seventh graders right. and this year this year they uh, they improved dramatically and, and got better each and every week and and um, really showed some some positive signs throughout the year and we're excited about those guys going forward and then the JV squad. Uh, Falling in a, in a pretty good battle. 
<laughs> it was. It was. Uh, it was eight to seven and a half. Cisco was leading, and uh, and we felt good about where we were at. You know, had had some chances to have the lead in the first half, and and didn't take advantage of those. And and defense played great. It was a physical ball game, one of the most physical JV games I think I've seen um, from both sides of the ball. And uh, and then they take the lead, sixteen to seven. And, and then we turn it over, and then they take the lead 22-7. to seven. And, You know, it's not looking good, but then our guys respond. We go right down, we get a turnover, and we go down and score, make it 22-14. to 14. And and then we have them third and three, and thinking if we if we can get a stop, get the ball back, we got a chance to go tie it up, and they break a long run and score, and uh, ends up 28-14. But it was a good ball game, uh, and kids, like I said, it was very physical. And, uh, and did a lot of good things, just uh, missed some opportunities that we had to to maybe get a little closer, maybe even tie it up. Okay, Coach, we're going to take our final break here on the morning huddle, and we'll be back with more from First, Fi- First Financial Bank. You're listening to KT- KTX Sports. Hope I can talk to you along with us. And, uh, Coach, uh, you know, we going back to realignment, <laughs> when we knew we were in the same district, and then after the schedules were released, everybody circled this date on the calendar. Uh, you know, West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard, they had already picked it possibly as being their, one of their Fiber Max play, uh, games of the week. It's the DQ game of the week. It's the Abilene Reporter News game of the week. It's uh, Sam Nichols at KTAB's uh, weather game. I mean, it's everybody's <laughs> game. I mean, I about fell out of my chair this morning when I heard you and Coach West on TSN Sports. So, I mean, it's everybody's game of the week. And uh, it's finally here, and uh, the Cisco uh, Lobos and the Eastland Mavericks battling out for district championship. What can we, what can we expect to see out of the Cisco Lobos? More of the same? <laughs> More of the same. Uh, you know, obviously Coach West and those guys do a great job year in year out. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna line up and uh, they're gonna run the ball right at you. They're gonna you know base out of the eye. They're gonna they're very multiple in their formations. Uh, but they're they're going to line up and and run the ball right at you and, and establish the run. And they what they want is they want to be able to move the ball, running the ball, and then they want you to fall asleep in the back end. And they're going to um, try and throw it over the top. And they have some very very capable receivers. Um, and so and they do a good job mixing it up defensively. They're going to base out of a four three, and they're going to do exactly what they do. They're very very well disciplined, very well coached, and. And they're going to be get a lot of hats to the football, like we preach every week. They they get a lot of guys to the football, and they're gonna they're gonna not make mistakes. They they don't mind giving up a play here, a play there, but they're gonna just do everything they can to keep you out of the end zone. They don't care about the yards in the middle of the field. Yeah, kid, the yards between the twenties doesn't matter. It's the yards inside the red zone that, right. that they're going to try to limit. And they do a great job playing red zone defense. They really do. Uh, Coach, uh, uh, on our side of the ball, uh, uh, I assume we're going to do the same thing that we've been. That we've done to get here, uh, same right. offense, we're same gonna, defense. We're not going to change anything that we've done um, the prior nine weeks. We're going to go out, and we uh, we our goal every week is to go out on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and get better. And I felt like we did that this week. We had a great week of preparation, even and, with the rain. <laughs> even with the rain, we uh, we practiced outside one day and the gym one day, a different field another day. And uh, but the but the guys did a great job of focusing and uh, staying getting ready to get prepared each and every day and didn't let the the little adversity mess with with their preparation and so had a, had a good week and and feel like uh, they're they're ready and of course uh, being the, the the spotlight on this game uh, you know some people might look at it and say oh advantage coach west because he's been there so long been in so many big games but you've been involved in a lot of big games as well as an assistant coach including the state championship game and some other big games and uh, you know maverick stadium is going to be electric tonight it's gonna it's gonna be a great atmosphere it really is it'll definitely be a playoff atmosphere be a lot of people and and uh it, it'll be fun for everybody but our, our focus that we've talked about all week is we've got to control our emotions and stay focused on our job do our job each and every play and uh and if we do our job and don't try and do somebody else's job then then we put ourselves in a situation to be successful so all right coach well that's uh you know we we've talked about it we've watched it we've played the other nine games uh, if one thing you would want to say to the fans tonight about this ball game here what would you say to them oh it, put you on know spot. yeah uh you know it, 
like you said, everybody's been talking about this game for a long time. Ever since I got this job, that's what everybody wanted to talk about was this game. And, uh, and, and you know, it's it's going to be two great football teams playing tonight. And, you know, it's it's going to be a great atmosphere, and there's going to be people everywhere. And just, uh, you know, it's a, just, you know, support your team and, and have fun doing it. But um, just, just play great sportsmanship, and it's going to be a great night. Come out uninjured. That's right. That's the main focus. Big game Stay for, healthy. Big game for the players. Big game for the coaching staffs. It's a big game for the officials to get this game. It is. It's a big game for Mr. Cochran, who is a, a new superintendent and facing this deal. I mean, right. it, it's a big game, but in the end, it's a game that's going to be played on the football field between two good football teams. Right. right. It's just it's uh, another district ball game, and it's for the district championship, so that you know adds a little bit to it. And it's a uh, it's a game we got to go out and like we. We've worked all week to prepare just like we have for every other game. And, you know, like I tell you every week, it's our biggest game of the year because it's the next game we got. Right. Next week, that's going to be the biggest game we have this year because that's the next game we got. And and um, whatever happens tonight, we've got to go back to work in the morning and get ready because, like you said earlier, next week it's winter go home. Yeah, and uh, got to take care of business. So that, that's the big thing. But, but uh, you know, I, I think our guys have done a great job of folks and, and preparing this week and, and, and treating it like, like they have every other game. A stat I'll throw out there, I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, Cisco's last district loss was in October of 2010 to Heiko. Eastland's last district loss was in September of 2010 to Breckenridge. So that's a pretty good streak of two teams 10 miles yeah. apart winning a bunch of district football games. <laughs> that is. So. That's a lot of wins in Eastern County. All right, Coach. Thanks so much for us. Good luck tonight. And uh, look forward to watching a quality high school football game at Maverick Stadium. Yes, sir. Look forward to it. All right, that's going to do it for another edition of the Morning Huddle. Remind everyone, stay tuned to KTX. We'll have more information about the traffic control issues for tonight's game. I want to say thanks to my engineer back in the studio, Blakeney Hodges. Great job as usual. Thanks to my guest, Coach Cliff Watkins. Thank you for your time this time to next time. Let's make it a great Friday night, everyone. I'm Terry Slavens. Have a great weekend.